Fox Sports. We are Baltimore. We are Houston. The Hawk stand continues for the Astros as the Pittsburgh Pirates visit Minute Maid Park for a four-game set. Rookie Dallas Keiko gets the nod for Houston. He tries to slow down a red-hot Pirates team. Pittsburgh is trying to avoid another second half collapse and make the playoffs for the first time since 1992. So stand up and root, root, root. Astros baseball is next on Fox Sports Houston. Minute Maid Park in Houston, Texas. Fox Sports Houston brings you Houston Astros baseball. Tonight it's the opener of a four game series between the Houston Astros and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Good evening, everybody. Bill Brown and Jim Deshays. Game number 100 for the Astros tonight. They try to snap a nine game losing streak against the Pirates, who now look like a team that could be a playoff team, JD. Yeah, well, the Pirates playing very good baseball. They have won six of their last eight ball games. The Astros faced them in Pittsburgh at the beginning of the month in a four game series. The Pirates won all of those. So the Astros up against it here tonight. It's the veteran A.J. Burnett for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Boy, he's having a nice bounce back year. 11 and 3, 359 ERA against Dallas Keuchel. The rookie's made five starts. He's 1 and 2 with an ERA a little over four. He's pitched twice here at Minute Maid Park, and both times Keuchel really threw the ball well, allowing just one earned run in each of those two starts. So here at Minute Maid tonight, will Dallas continue to do well in Houston against the Buccos, who have been fortified by Wandy Rodriguez? And a rookie makes his major league debut for them in the leadoff spot tonight. First pitch is coming up. you by the Progressive Insurance Group. Call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE today. 
Well, interesting situation here. The Astros are taking the field on time. The umpires showed up late. They have not even started their conference at home plate. So, though the Astros are on the field for this Pittsburgh versus Houston game, uh, for the second game in a row, the umpires are just arriving, and that means it probably will start a minute or two late. The Astros going into this game are 24 and 24 in 48 games at Minute Bay Park. So, to stay above 500, they need to win this when Daryl Cousins is the home plate umpire so it's his fault they showed up late Alan Porter Dave Rackley and Jim Wolf will be on the bases and we'll take a look today to see if any of these guys use a clicker because that is why we had a delay in the game last night they had lost track of the count and uh, they were missing a ball and Brandon Phillips was complaining about it because the scoreboard was wrong and that's all they were using so they had to go up and call the official scorer who keeps a pitch by pitch record to confirm that he had walked. Brad Mills says we knew he had walked, so we didn't protest it, but uh, it's a new thing in baseball. Over the last few years, some of the younger umpires don't use one of those little ball strike indicators, and if anyone else makes a mistake, maybe they do too. I'm not sure if that Brad Mills is talking about that with his new crew, but uh, they are out there. Warm-up pitches are going underway, so let's go up to the booth. Bill Brown and Jim Deshaies. For Brad Mills, an opportunity to get things headed in the other direction. His club has lost nine in a row and has been outscored 67 to 27. And uh, during the pregame meeting with the media, he said that uh, his closer of the last couple of nights, Francisco Cordero, will be getting a night off tonight. So he'll mix and match if it comes to that. Hyundai will show you the starting lineup for the Buccos manager, Clint Hurdle. Going with Starling Marte, a rookie making his major league debut in left field. Neil Walker at second base. Andrew McCutcheon center field. Garrett Jones right field. Casey McGee first base. Pedro Alvarez third base. Rod Barajas catcher. Clint Barmer shortstop. A.J. Burnett pitcher. A young left-hander Dallas Keuchel for the Astros tonight. He's made five big league starts. You see the breakdown his first three. He was 1-0 and with a buck 35 ERA. Last two, including one against the Pirates back on July 4th. Obviously not quite as good. Starling Marte, 23 years old from the Dominican Republic. Going for the first pitch and hitting it high to left center field off Dallas Keuchel. A deep drive for Marte, and that is a big splash as he breaks into the major leagues with a leadoff homer on the very first pitch. Wow, how about that? First pitch he sees in a big league uniform leading off a ball game, and Marte gives the Pirates a 1 0 lead. He has drawn comparisons to that man right there. He just high five their star center fielder Andrew McCutcheon. He has that skill set, power, speed. And what a moment for him. Big time moment for Starling Marte and a one nothing lead for the Buccos. As Neil Walker bats. Michael falling behind 1 0 on Walker. Switch hitting second baseman with a 293 average, nine homers, 47 runs batted in. With a 359 on base average. Walker has gotten it going here. And he's hit well at Minute Maid Park in the past. This is the first game in this ballpark this season for the Pirates. And they had won six of seven in Pittsburgh from the Astros coming into this one. Walker has picked up the pace hitting 398 in his last 24 games with five homers 17 runs batted in. That one goes to center field backing up Justin Maxwell. To the warning track. Walker with a nice easy swing and driving that one all the way to the base of Tal's Hill. So two big swings by the Pirates already here this evening defensively the Astros feature. That trio in the outfield and an infield of Johnson, Gonzalez, Altuve, and more. Carlos Corporan behind the plate. Andrew McCutcheon was named National League Player of the Month in June. He hit 370 in June with seven homers. Well, July has been even more sizzling in terms of batting average. There's ball one. And right now he leads the majors with a 369 average. Has 130 hits that second in the National League an OPS of 1060 that second and there's a line drive single to left field. And McCutcheon gets hit number 131 he's the league leader in total bases as well it's a sensational year underway for McCutcheon. And then what really separates him from a lot of the other guys it's that combination of speed and power he's also stolen 14 bases.
He's aboard for Garrett Jones with 14 homers, 45 runs batted in, a 264 average for Jones. Left handed pitching has slowed him down some. Jones takes a look at ball one from Keiko. Keiko with 17 walks in 29 innings. Had to deal with a lot of base runners. That's a drive to right field. Bogusevic back on this deep one, and that one leaves the park for a two run shot for Jones. Three nothing Pirates with one out in the first inning. Number 15 for Jones, giving him 47 runs batted in. That home run Marte hit to, uh, to start the ball game made it 16 consecutive road games that the Pirates have gone deep. So they're really flexing their muscles on the road. Their ballpark at home, PNC Park, very tough to hit home runs, but on the road they've been uh, really swinging it well. Garrett Jones getting a chance to play more frequently against left handers and making another swing of the bat to press his case to his manager, Clint Hurdle. And Dallas Keuchel. Would love to have a mulligan and start this one all over again. The Pirates have ambushed him with the two long balls earlier. They now have hit 109 homers. They're third in the National League. And until Marte connected, the last Pirate to hit a home run in his first at bat was Don Leppert in 1961. Now Casey McGee's the batter. And that's ball one. McGee checks in at 236 with eight homers. He's driven in 35 runs. He went two for 20 on the Pirates' homestand. Out in front there, and it's one and one. But they managed to go four and two on that homestand without a whole lot of help from Casey. They swept the Marlins, and they lost two of three to the Cubs. They won yesterday three to two. So they've taken six of their last eight games and 13 of their last 19. Two and a half behind Idle Cincinnati. Fly ball goes out to center. Maxwell moving over for it. And a lot of balls in the air so far off Keiko. That's out number two. That time he had McGee out on the front foot a little bit. Induced that lazy fly ball to center field. There's the note on Marte. First pirate and first career at bat since Don Leppard. That was some instant thunder. 110 players have homered in their first career at bats. I believe Chuck Tanner was one of those with Milwaukee, the former Pirate skipper. Pedro Alvarez looks at strike one. Number of Astros uh, have done it. Most of the ones that did it really did not go on to have successful major league careers. Not to say that this kid won't. Right. Alvarez takes a breaking pitch. It's one and one. Alvarez with 58 runs batted in. And 21 long balls doing some good slugging this year for the Pirates. Doesn't walk much. That's a low on base average of 296, but he has provided some thunder. And he's 25 years old. He was a first round pick in 08. Keiko misses there and falls behind him. Yeah, you got Daryl Cousins behind the plate, and uh, Daryl's got a little bit of a tight zone, and that really doesn't suit Keiko very well at all. Borderline pitches, and not calling them strikes, and he just you know, Keiko can't, can't give in. He's got to continue to try to hit the corners, keep the ball down around the knees. You know, there's some guys when they're not getting those borderline calls can go ahead and elevate, attack the middle of the strike zone. Dallas does not have that kind of stuff. He's got to continue to stick to his game plan. Alvarez has homered four times in his last nine games. This is there, and it's a full count. Keiko went 1 0 with a 1.35 ERA in his first three major league starts. In his last two, a loss at Pittsburgh and a loss at Arizona, 0 and 2 with an ERA of 10. That's rolled out to first base. Down on a knee, Scott Moore tossing to Keiko. And the Pirates explode for three in the first on two bombs. Marte and Jones give them a 3 0 lead.
Hyundai lineup card for Brad Mills for the bottom half. It's Jose Altuve at second base. Marwin Gonzalez, the shortstop. Batting third is the center fielder, Justin Maxwell. The cleanup man is first baseman, Scott Moore. With J.D. Martinez in left field, Chris Johnson at third base, Brian Bogusevic in right field, Carlos Corpor on the catcher for Dallas Keuchel. Veteran right-hander A.J. Burnett for the Pirates here tonight, having an outstanding year. Ten home runs, or ten wins, excuse me, since May 19th. That leads Major League Baseball. How about that? 11 and 3, 359 the ERA. And defensively, the Pirates, uh, there's Marte, the home run hitter. McCutcheon can really get after it in the outfield. Jones is in right. Alvarez, Barmas, Walker, McGee on the infield. Barajas behind the plate. First pitch to Altuve is up under his chin for ball one. Jose at 299 with five homers, has 27 runs batted in. He's been on a good surge recently. Last night he had a seventh three hit game of the season. And his 35th multi hit game. He's got 109 hits. This one in the air toward the right field corner. Jones comes over. That's out number one. Ball just fair. AJ Burnett's been unbelievable in his home ballpark on the road. He's four and three with a high ERA. Here's Jones putting this one away for the first out. His ERA on the road is 6.30. So you might think, well, he's really struggled on the road, but a big chunk of that came in one start at St. Louis back on May 2nd when he allowed 12 earned runs in two and two-thirds innings. That'll put a hit on your ERA. Yeah. Marwin Gonzalez at 275 with a homer has five runs batted in. He went two for eleven in the Cincinnati series. There's Paul one to Marwin. Red sweeping that series. They're off today in Colorado, so the Pirates could gain a half game on the front runners. Pirates two and a half games out right now. And they are in a wild card spot. If the season ended today, they would be a playoff team. That's a strike, and that makes it one and one. And Wandy Rodriguez will be starting here Saturday night against the Astros. Pirates making that announcement. Eric Bedard was listed as the Saturday starter. He'll be moved back to Monday, and Kevin Correa has been assigned to the bullpen with a six game winning streak as yeah. a starter. <laughs> it's a tough break for Correa. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. Yeah, Clint Hurdle told the media he hated to send that news along to Kevin yeah. Correa. Not as much as Correa hated it, I'm sure. For sure. Two and one. Marwin Gonzalez has hit 340 for his last 60 plate appearances, going 18 for 53. But Clint is the skipper, and the Pirates are playing well. Two balls, two strikes. We were getting some good reports on the youngsters the Astros received in the Wandy Rodriguez deal from some of the Pirate coaches. Rudy Owens will be a lefty at uh, AAA Oklahoma City for the Astros. Marwin has stepped it up from 214 to 360, as you see. And roughly the same number of plate appearances. This one goes deep to center field. Cutchin got back early. Two outs. And Justin Maxwell will come up. Burnett is two and five against Houston with a 5.37 ERA for nine starts. He's lost his last three decisions to the Astros. The last time he beat them early in the 02 season at Florida. Maxwell with 10 homers has driven in 29 with a 224 average. Justin two for 13 with a homer against the Reds. That one's in the air to right field. Garrett Jones very deep. Now he moves in to make it a three fly ball out. First inning for Burnett and a three nothing Pirate lead.
Move to the second. Hey, our next flashback Friday presented by Methodist Hospital Systems coming up tomorrow against these same Pirates. Astros will wear the 1980s shoulder rainbow jerseys on the field and Mike Scott will toss out the ceremonial first pitch. After the game, all fans can enjoy Friday Night Fireworks presented by Marathon Oil. Root now and get those tickets at Astros.com. Always great to see Scotty in town, guys. Absolutely. I'm not getting anything out of the pen out of them. Let's hope. <laughs> Rod Barajas leads it off. 3 nothing Pirates. And Dallas Keiko comes inside. Ball one. Barajas at 209 has eight homers. He's driven in 19 runs. The subject of pitching inside was discussed with Dallas after his last start and before this one. Well, he's been good inside here with the roof closed. Not that inside. No. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes. <laughs> Inside on right handed batters would help set up his other stuff. Two balls and a strike, and the Astros felt that that was necessary with the way that Dallas pitches, and that uh, maybe he had neglected that in the last couple of starts. That's a little roller foul. Two balls, two strikes. I think the key too is to be able to react in the course of a ball game to what the opposing hitters are doing. We, we you know, Tom Glavin. A finesse left hander. There were games where he'd just stay outside all night long and never really come in. But if you saw the hitter starting to lean out, dive, and, and hit the ball the other way, then he'd start to throw some cut fastballs in on their hands. You have to be able to recognize what the other club is trying to do. A lot of it is dictated by the strike zone the home plate umpire is giving you. Sometimes you get a guy that'll call that borderline pitch down and away, and you can just live out there. But if not, then you've got to really make sure you do your work inside to, to open up that outside part of the plate a little bit. Dallas is a command pitcher, but there's a leadoff walk, and so he's not been able to produce so far in his five major league starts the kind of numbers he had when having good command at AAA. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one, to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lite. So that would be the objective for him. And after his last game, he said uh, that his sinker had a little too much run to it, so he was having difficulty locating that in the strike zone. Well, that's a function of arm angle. He gets his arm back on top. The ball will have better sink and less lateral movement. See, again, that's that's a pitch right there. On, on, on another night with a different umpire, that might be strike one. And that, that you know, for a guy like Keuchel, that that sets everything up. He's got to be able to get a called strike down and away to these right-handed hitters. If not, he he's really up against it. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing. And again, that that ball was off the plate. That's his game, it's just to bang away at that outside corner. So even though the walk numbers are high, I don't think he's really been wild in his starts. Former Astro Clint Barmas has worked the count to 2-0. That's a strike to make it two and one to Clint. At a 205 with four homers, 25 runs batted in, providing good defensive work. He's made three errors in his last 64 games. Pirates are 11th in runs scored, but they have shown signs after the first two months of being much better than that. That's hit to left field very well and hit high and hit in the seats for a two run homer for the former Astro Clint Barmas, a pull hitter. We just pull one for number five of the year, giving him 27 runs batted in and a 5 nothing Pirate lead. We saw a little bit out of that, uh, out of uh, Barmas last year doing that. The ability to hook a ball away from him into the Crawford boxes. Barmas off to a terrible start this year, still not hitting for much average. But the way his mates have come around, it's taken a little of the pressure off him, hitting 205 prior to this swing of the bat. Three long balls by the Buckos. Now A.J. Burnett. One ball, one strike to Burnett, who has two hits and 29 at bats. Burnett's take to a five run lead in the early going here. It's one and two. This Pirate pitching staff has been very good. Varmus with the latest and third of the long balls. Pirates have hit 67 homers on the road. 
Burnett's down on strikes. First strikeout for Keiko, who gets out number one. The Buckos in their last 16 road games, as JD mentioned, have homered in every single one of them for a total of 35 home runs in those 16 games. Now Starling Marte and uh, had that rarity. Home run on his first major league pitch. The only other pirate to do that, Walter Mueller, 1922. Walter Mueller. Yeah. There it is. First major league swing. That's setting the bar a little high there, Starling. I'm going to regret that. <laughs> Expectations going through the roof now in Pittsburgh for this kid. Yeah. 0 oh 2. Well, the last uh, player to do it in the National League was last year, Tom Malone, the pitcher, who's now with Oakland, did it. And he was the 14th in National League history. Uh, Marte was when he connected earlier in this game. One and two. Oh, we were talking with uh, John Wayner before the game. John's next door doing color on the Pirates broadcast, and he said Marte in spring training reminded him a little bit of Vlad Guerrero. Yeah. Kind of wiry, strong, sw swings at everything, and has a lot of power. He's been a center fielder until about two weeks ago, and of course uh, McCutcheon has center field very well anchored. Pirates were looking for help at the corner spot, so they moved him to left field a couple of weeks ago. He hit 286 for Indianapolis, 12 homers, 62 runs batted in, and his strike zone judgment improved quite a bit, we were told. Last year, he led uh, the Eastern League in hitting at 332. A very good talent who was signed uh, as a free agent in 07 from the Dominican Republic. And down at AAA this year, he also had 20 doubles. 13 triples and 21 stolen bases. So gives you an idea of the skill set. It's a lot of triples. That it is. 23 years old. Takes that one for ball two. Two balls, two strikes. And the Pirates left him down there, even though he was playing extremely well, and they were. Giving uh, Alex Presley a chance to come around in left field, but Pirates left fielders have combined for a 242 on base average and a 560 OPS to this point of the season. Still two balls, two strikes. Marte could be a plus with his speed and outfield coverage in the big left field at PNC Park. Yeah, you'd like to have center fielder speed in left field in that yard. I'm a good change up here. That one heads for right center field. Bogusevic moving over. Maxwell there. Maxwell takes care of it. Two down. Now it's Neil Walker coming up. Walker hit a fly ball to center first time up. He's a Pittsburgh native who did not hit his first homer until May 5th. Sometimes we see him hitting fifth in the lineup. He's a guy who's moved around to different spots in the order for Clint Hurdle. And strike one for Keichel. Switch hitter. He's been better from the other side as a right handed batter. He came into this game hitting 266. That's out to center field and Maxwell. Takes care of that one as well. It's two runs, one hit for the Buccos. After one and a half, they lead it five nothing.
the Pirates have broken out the long ball bats. They have three. Now Astros fans hoping they can begin a comeback here in the second inning with more Martinez and Johnson do up against A.J. Burnett. Scott Moore with four homers and 11 runs batted in is hitting 222. Got him right where we want him, Brownie. Yeah. Load them into a false sense of security. And we're going to ambush him. Sounds like a plan. If you look back through all this, this stretch of all this losing, mm -hmm. not once have the Astros trailed five to nothing after an inning and a half. Ah. So they're changing the formula. Different pattern. Moore has a homer and five at bats off Burnett, who misses inside there. Oh, yeah. Moore hit a bomb in Pittsburgh. Burnett has only given up nine homers in 109 innings. Ground ball rate is up significantly this year for Burnett. What's with that, JD? Uh, throwing more sinkers. Okay. He throws both a four seam and a sinking fastball. When he first came into the league with the Marlins, he could really light up the radar gun. Still a hard thrower, 93, 94 miles an hour. Foul back, and it's two and two. Got a good hook. Occasional change up. Burnett's from North Little Rock, Arkansas. And Dallas Keuchel went to the University of Arkansas. Burnett uh, missed the first few weeks of the season with uh, surgery for a facial fracture from a bunt that went into his face in spring training. Yeah, there's that good hook. Strike out number one for Burnett. Yeah, it's kind of a badge of honor, isn't that? There's not many guys who see. Yeah, I broke my face. No, I was out with a broken face. He kind of like company with yeah, that. The guys who go around nursing hamstrings, he's he like out matches them. He got a little hammy. I <laughs> broke my face. He wasn't even doing it in a game either. It was a budding drill in early March. Tough way to start your season. J.D. Martinez is up next with 11 homers, 51 runs batted in. He leads the club in runs batted in. Taking strike one. 244 is JD's average. He missed a few games with a sore right shoulder from a collision with a wall in Arizona. Returned to the starting lineup last night. He was three for six with an RBI in the Red Series. Hit so that, oh, go ahead. Hit that big double uh, last night, JD. Yeah. In the eighth inning, and the Astros took a three to two lead, and then the Reds came back with three in the ninth. Yeah, it was heartbreaking. Yeah, what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say they put these fun facts up on the message board here now. His uh -huh. at bat music is bang, bang, pow, pow. Oh, really? That's good. That's good for a hitter. Walker. You know, you've got that on your iPod. Uh, well, not yet, but T Pain. Check it out. Lil Wayne. Okay. Sounds like it's worth checking out, JD. <laughs> Lil Wayne is not Wayne Garrett either. I know. <laughs> Wayne Garrett, the red headed Mets third baseman. Yeah. Five straight retired by Burnett, who has pitched a no hitter in his major league career. He's won 132 games. Chris Johnson's the batter, 273 for Chris, six homers, 38 runs batted in. CJ, six for 13 against the Reds. AJ Burnett walked nine in his no hitter. I believe it was against the Padres, and I think that was a major league record that many walks in a no hitter. Don't hold me to it. It seems to ring a bell. That was an 0-1 at San Diego. Joe Cowley had uh, mm -hmm. he had one of those shortened no hitters, but he walked a bunch of guys. And Joe, his. yeah, Joe. I think if, well, Joe. No, I think Joe had a legit no hitter, but okay. he, walked, he walked seven, I think. Okay. And seven or eight. And I think Burnett actually broke his record. <laughs> Struck him out, and that's six in a row set down by Burnett, who leads it five to nothing.
the third. And it's time for our progressive fan of the game who is here with his entire family. John and Rachel Copeland are here, and they have five boys, one of which could not be here today. Yeah, it makes you tired just thinking about it, doesn't it? Uh, and if you're wondering who the Copeland's favorite Astro is all time, show them. There you go. And that's a good selection. Big Biggio fans out here. But Noah Copeland right here is going to be 8, July 31st. Yes. And so this is your birthday party. You're spending it out here at an Astros game. Yes. All right. And your brothers are? Steven. Tyler. Brett. All right. And... Steven, this is your first Astros game also, all time, right? Well, hopefully they can stage a comeback here. Let's talk to Mom and Pop because I know they've got to be a little bit tired when you bring four boys to the baseball game, right? It is a little tiring, yes. <laughs> but they're good kids. I, I mean, I've raised two boys. I'd give anything if they were that quiet. Mm, you got lucky. <laughs> well, luck counts. All right, so it's Noah's eighth birthday, and you got one at home. Sure. How long have you guys been baseball Astros fan? Oh, since the video days, early, uh, yeah. late 80s, yeah. yeah. So loyal fans here with a young man, Noah, who's about to turn eight. Happy birthday, pal. We're glad you came out to the ballpark. Happy birthday. You are the progressive fan of the game. Back to you guys. Thank you, Bart. Good-looking family there. It's two balls, two strikes to Andrew McCutcheon. He singled to left and scored in the first inning. Came into this game hitting 464 in July. And since 1921, only one pirate has had a better batting average for the month of July. George Catfish Metkovich, 1951. Ooh. The Catfish. Yeah, Catfish hit 469 in July of 51. Those were not good days for the Buckos. One hopper, CJ. One out. Michael trying to settle in here. After giving up two homers in the first and another in the second inning, and it'll be Jones. Jones hit home run number 15 of the year in that first inning. Buckos averaging just a shade over four runs per game this season. On the road, they're four games under 500, 22 and 26. This is the start of a 10 game trip for them. Foul back, strike one. They'll be going to Chicago and Cincinnati after this leg of the trip. After this four game series, the Astros head for Milwaukee and then on down to Atlanta. Sounded like a broken bat. It goes all the way out deep to right field. Bogus Savick on the warning track. Two outs. Man. <laughs> That's a That's what Keichel is asking Cor uh, Corporal on that. Didn't, did he break his bat? It sounded like it. Not a whole lot of room to operate out there, but Bogey able to haul it in. Take away extra bases from Jones. Michael looks for his first three up, three down inning. I, I misspoke on uh, Burnett last half inning. He did not set a record with that nine walk, no hitter. Jim Maloney walked 10 in a no hitter. Did he really? Yeah. Punched out 12, walked 10. Wow. There's ball one. That wasn't the one against the Astros, though. McGee hit the fly ball to center field in the first inning. In the dirt, and it's two balls, no strikes to Casey McGee. McGee came in a trade from Milwaukee. Jose Veras over the winter. Zach Grinke may not be a Brewer too much longer. Sounds like he'll be dealt. What's, what's today? 20. 26. Yeah. Got five days left. Mm -hmm. Who's going to get him? Well, What's your bet? Several possibilities. The Rangers are one. The Dodgers are another. Chris Johnson to his left. Good throw. That's a one, two, three, third for Dallas Keiko. Five nothing Pirates.
Cancer Center, making cancer history. It was on this date in 1963 that Bob Aspromati hits a first inning grand slam on the Mets' Tracy Stoudett. That wasn't the whole story. As he round the bases, he pointed to fan Bill Bradley, whose sight had just been restored after three eye operations. This story has a lot more to it. You can hear it and read it in My Baseball Journey, uh, Bill Brown's book, MyBaseballJourney.com. That details, of course, there. And that goes, uh, the proceeds of that book go to the Foundation for Ectodermal Dysplasia. But it's a great story. This was one of the great moments of that story. Thanks, Greg. Wandy Rodriguez has changed uniforms. He is a Pittsburgh Pirate now, and he'll be pitching here Saturday night at 6.05 against the Astros. Well, that guy. <laughs> it's going to take a while to sink in, isn't it? <laughs> Astros have not named their starter yet for Saturday. There's Burnett's pitch at strike one to Bogusevic. Home third underway to a 219 hitting Bogusevic with six homers, 21 runs batted in. Remember the first time Tug McGraw pitched in Shea Stadium as a member of the Phillies? No. And he got the side out and he went sprinting towards the Mets dugout. <laughs> I wonder if Wani will pull that. Oh, that would be fun. One ball, one strike. Well, the Pirates and Astros are both feeling very good about the way they matched up on that trade. Sharp breaking ball makes it two balls and a strike to Brian Bogusevic. Bogey went one for four in the Cincinnati series. He stole a base last night. Okay, Bogey hit this one over somebody's head. Got a five nothing uh, ball game here, two one count. He's got a challenge, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Now hops out toward McGee, tossing to Burnett. That's seven straight retired by Burnett. He's won as many games as he did all of last year with the Yankees. 11 and 11 with the Yankees last year with an ERA in the five. Excuse me. Although you know pitching in the American League, especially in the American League East, you expect a little bit of an inflated ERA. Mm -hmm. Carlos Corporan hitting 333 in July with a homer and four runs batted in. You know you're asking about the possible suitors for Zach Greinke. Reading uh, the Rangers, the Angels, the Braves, and the White Sox. Dodgers apparently are trying to hone in on Ryan Dempster now. And so they're not thought to be serious suitors for Grinky at this point. It's kind of interesting though if that's true about the Rangers and Angels both competing for the AL West mm -hmm. and both competing for Grinky. It's Doug Melvin the general manager of the Brewers in a very enviable position. You bet it you does. Go back and forth with those two clubs. Well they're willing to give their top three prospects. How about you. <laughs> Now Melvin said to USA Today that Grinky would be traded by the deadline, but he's not saying that same thing to MLB.com. It's 2 0. He just says that uh, there's a possibility, and he says, I don't think there's any secret with the trade deadline that this is a possibility. But the story is that apparently uh, they were unable to agree on a contract extension. It's there for a strike, and it's two and one with Dallas Keuchel on deck. A couple of disappointments the last two nights for the Astros, who went to the ninth inning with the lead in both of those games and lost four to two Tuesday night and five to three last night. So they try to pick themselves up off the mat and win this one, snap a nine-game losing streak. Two and two. This is game number 100 for the Astros. They're 34 and 65. Since the 25th of May, they're 12 and 42. My ball left field toward the line. Marte over. That's a looping hit. Corporan, the first base runner for the Astros, with a one-out single here in the third. Nothing wrong with a little good fortune to try to get a little something going. Breaking up the no hitter of Burnett. This is the Astros' uh, third time facing AJ this year. Back on April, or excuse me, May 13th in Pittsburgh, he was really good. Allowed two runs in eight innings. He got no decision. The Pirates ultimately won the game three to two. And then back on July 3rd, the Astros really had a nice game against them. Banged out 12 hits, scored six runs in five innings, but the Astros lost that one eight to seven. 
And Keichel around expected to body is 0 for 7 with one sacrifice. Once this one and Barajas takes care of it over to Walker for the sacrifice. Pump on to second, two outs. Play goes from two to four, and now it's Altuve batting. Good job here by Keichel. Deadening that ball out in front of home plate. Putting a man in scoring position for Altuve, who's been the Astros' best hitter over the last week or ten days. Five game hitting streak for Jose. It was funny, he was on base four times last night. Two singles, a double, and a walk. And maybe his best at bat was the final out of the game when he battled the Rollers Chapman for 10 11 pitches. It just put up one heck of a fight, ultimately grounded out to Roland at third base. Yeah. But I think that would be the one, that, you know, the the, the, fan, the scouts and the stands watching would have been really impressed with, with that at bat. Good point. One ball, one strike. Well, you talk sometimes about batting average on balls in play. For Jose, that was uh, 315 as of a few days ago. And the feeling is that he will be a solid major league hitter as long as he continues to hit the way he has been. Doesn't strike out a lot. Yeah, and that, you know, normally when, if you see a real high batting average on balls in play, you figure that the, the guy's out over skis a little bit and is likely to come down, but that's that's just a little probably just a little bit above league average. Right. And really that's the key for Jose because he doesn't walk a lot. Doesn't hit for a lot of power, so his value as an offensive player is all about his batting average and his speed. Well, we lunged at that sharp breaking ball in the dirt, and Barajas tagged him. In the third inning, it's no runs ahead, and a runner stranded after three, five, nothing, Bucko. We go to the top of the fourth inning, but first of all, AT&T has trivia for you. Who are the six active pitchers? One is on the disabled list who have had 10 seasons with 10 wins or more. 10 seasons with 10 wins or more. Six active pitchers. Okay, let's see. I'm going to guess AJ Burnett. Okay, let's guess Burnett. Oswald. 10 seasons. Okay. Halliday. Beckett. Two. Striking out on this one. I'm getting negative feedback from the truck. Ten seasons. Ten seasons is a long time. Mm hmm What is this? 2012. Okay. Yes. We've got to have some frame of reference here. 2012. Uh, well, Andy Pettit. 
Alvarez hits a sharp one hopper. Altuve's there. One pitch, one out here for Keiko. He's settling down now to the tune of seven straight. Retired. And Barajas will follow. He walked and scored in the second inning. Does Jamie Moyer count as an active pitcher? Um, not sure. Nice play by Tuve. Sabathia, a possibility for you? Yep, strong possibility. Strike to Barajas. Sharing the catching position with Michael McHenry. Peavy? Burley? I'd go with Burley. Maybe Peavy. I don't think he's done it though. Let's go Burley. One and one. Burley Grimes. Oh, he was a good one. <laughs> Straight side fastball. Yeah, one and two. Cardinals with the Dodgers today, seven to four. Tim Hudson. Barajas is down on strikes. That's out number two. Yeah, breaking out the curveball. Second strikeout. Okay, we'll get the answer. Well, we threw a lot of darts at the board. Well, let me see. We mentioned we Pettis, missed. Sabathia, Hudson, Burley, Burnett. <laughs> Miss Five Levon. out of six. We missed Levon. Yeah. Well, what do we get? A B plus on that? Oh, solid. Okay. B plus, A minus. We're exempt from the final. Mm. Strike to Clint Barmas, who hooked a home run back in the second inning, a two run shot for Clint. Signed a two year deal as a free agent to join the Pirates. Two strikes. Graduate to a survey of baseball minutia. 300 level. <laughs> Cardinals got 18 hits and whacked the Dodgers seven to four today. I watched a little bit of that ball game. How did it look? It was interesting. The uh, Cardinals jumped out to an early lead, and then uh, the Dodgers at one point got five hits in six pitches off Jake Westbrook. Whoa! That one hits for left center field. So does Maxwell. Nine straight retired by Keiko. 5 0 Pirates in the fourth. Jack in the box. Get the All American Jack combo for only $4.99 plus tax at participating stores. Buy the all new Mazda CX5 with 35 highway miles per gallon. And buy Cushada Casino Resort, the largest, most exciting casino resort in Louisiana. Well, Keiko has calmed down. The Pirates, though, scored five early. 
as the game moves on. Let's go back to the booth. Bill Brown and Jim Deshaies. Well, with AJ Burnett, Greg, 10 and 1 since May 19th with a 2.84 ERA, and then spotted with the early 5 to nothing lead. It is a hill to climb for the Astros. The Pirates are 14 and 3 in his 17 starts. The hill's been sprayed with uh, ice too. It's a slippery slope they're trying to climb up against Burnett. But it, it's like I said earlier, if you got him right where we want him, we, we set him up for this. Mm -hmm. Keiko's doing his piece. Now it's time for the ambush. Marwin Gonzalez would love to begin that. He worked the count to 2 2, hit a fly ball to center in the first inning. Last Pirate to win more than 11 to this point of a season was Denny Nagel in 96 with 12 wins through 97 games. Foul back to strike one. Denny the human train whistle Nagel. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And Kevin Correa had 11 wins to this point in the season last year as Burnett does now. And Kevin wound up with 12. Well, Correa is going to the bullpen, and we've been told that he is. He is adding to an already strong Pirate bullpen. One ball, one strike. He won't be available for relief work for a few days. He just started. Butted and foul. One ball, two strikes. Dennis Swanson is here. He's the president of uh, station operations for the Fox Television Group, and he and his uh, grandson are making a tour of ballparks. They're going to five different ballparks on this trip. They went to ten last year. And uh, Clint Hurdle's club will welcome him at one point to PNC. He hasn't been there yet. It's two balls, two strikes. It's time to get those summer vacations in. It's almost time to go back to school. That's a good point. Let's see. The Astros uh, go to Pittsburgh in early September, the third, fourth, and fifth. Pirates come back here one more time, third week in September. Pirates were 72 and 90 last year. That's top yeah, five. That was a significant. Improvement over the year before. Yeah. Well, a year ago yesterday, they were tied for first at 53 and 47. They lost a 19 inning game in Atlanta. Julio Lugo playing for the Braves uh, slid home. Uh, Mike McHenry tagged him, but the home plate umpire didn't see the tag, and the Braves won the game. And after that, the Pirates were 19 and 42. Three balls, two strikes. They just think they're a lot better fortified. To avoid a problem like that this year. My thinking is had they won that game they would have been 20 and 41 the rest of the way. <laughs> yeah well. <laughs> I, don't put, I don't put a whole lot of stock into that. Well they lost that. Big 19 again they just cratered. Well they and they say that too. Clint Hurdle said we didn't hit. This ball being chased and Alvarez comes over with Barajas there for the catch. And the Gonzalez pop up for out number one. That they would love to go to the playoffs for the first time since 92. How about that? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. My goodness. The uh, the thing in Pittsburgh was they just want to have a winning season, right? But that's all changed now. Winning season isn't going to be good enough. They want to go to the postseason with you the bet. year they're having. You bet. Well, there's the uh, 1980s retro hat coming up tomorrow against the Pirates to the first 10,000 fans. Good looking cap. And hopefully you'll be here to pluck one of those. Astros.com for your tickets or that number 18779 Astros. That'll be Jordan Lyles and Jeff Karstens at 705 tomorrow night. That's courtesy of Xfinity, by the way. And the Astros remembering the 1980s as part of their 50th anniversary celebration. So you can get one of those retro caps if you're among the first 10,000 fans. You can buy tickets at Astros.com. Curveball there to J Max. And it's no balls, two strikes. In that Dodger Cardinal game, Jake Westbrook won his ninth, and Mott got his 22nd save. Towering pop. Here. It's a high one. He'll have to fair catch this. Oh boy! Some hang time there yeah. for McGee. Two out. Might have outkicked his coverage. 
Yeah, Capuano got really crushed. He gave up 11 hits and six earned runs in four and a third innings. For the Dodgers, Hannah Ramirez again played third base. He was one for two and walked a couple of times. And uh, the Dodgers might not be finished with their acquisitions. Apparently, uh, Dempster had them number one on his list. And the deal with the Braves fell through, so now the reports are the Dodgers are really making a strong push to get Dempster. He's good buddies with Ted Lilly over there in LA. Oh, that's right. Well, Ted should be back yeah. soon from the DL. Just through a rehab uh, simulated game or something recently, I was reading that Lilly worked three innings of something. Mm -hmm. so you know what, though? You're bringing up uh, an interesting little factoid, though, about the ex Cubs on a team. You know, how many ex Cubs would be on the mm -hmm. Dodgers? Yeah, it might be, it might be, it might be getting <laughs> too close to the. <laughs> What is it? Three or more ex Cubs, and you're not going to win. You're done. You are finished. Now, is there a statute of limitations if somebody hasn't been a Cub for <laughs> three or four years? Is, is that washed uh, off of his record? Or I don't know. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> All these jinxes. Good swing, but a liner caught by Walker. Well, Scott Moore went down and ripped it, but it's out number three, and after four, it's five nothing Pirates. What do you drive tomorrow's game two of a four game series between the Astros and the Pittsburgh Pirates and Jordan Lyles gets the ball making his 29th career start 14th in the big leagues this season. He struggled his last two trips to the mound. Five earned runs allowed Sunday in Arizona. He will go against Jeff Karsten's coverage begins at 630 with Astros live. This has been your Mazda game break Brownie. Thanks Kevin AJ Burnett hits a little tapper back to Dallas Keuchel. One pitch, one out here in the fifth inning. Keichel turning his game around after giving up three homers in the first two innings. He's now retired ten in a row. Burnett's 0 for 2, and now it's Starling Marte. Marte hit the first pitch of his major league career for a homer in the first inning, and then he flied to center in the second. The only Astro to do that was Mark Sacamano in 2008. First pitch major league homer. Kaz Matsui did it for the Mets in 2004. There's strike one. So that's a piece of history for Mr. Marte. I can never take that away from him, Brownie. Nope. Now, if this were an outdoor ballpark, he might be worried that it would rain and wash out the home run. No worries here. Well, there have been some big home runs lost to rainouts down through the years.
One ball, one strike. Cliff Johnson lost one one time. I think it was uh, the fifth consecutive game in which he had homered for the Astros. But it didn't go the five innings required to make it an official game because of rain. Two balls, two strikes. Good hard cut fastball in. Been part of his uh, turnaround. He's using both sides of the plate effectively. In the hole and on through off the glove of Marwin Gonzalez. Marte's on with his second hit of the night. Yeah, they weren't going to throw him out from the hole anyway with his speed. You know, we talked about Keiko using both sides of the play. Sometimes for a pitcher, it's just a matter of luck in that first inning. We're trying to settle in out there. If some, you know, if Marte pops that ball up instead of hitting it out of the ballpark. You know, when you're a little wobbly and you haven't established yourself out there yet, sometimes you need a little good fortune. He didn't get it. He got whacked around in the first, then gave up the home run to Barmus in the second. But since then, he's really pitched well. Located his fastball, used his changeup effectively. Gotten Walker both times on fly balls to center field. Well, Keichel pitched a gem here against Cleveland, a complete game in his second major league start. Back on June 23rd, he beat the Tribe 8 to 1, giving up six hits and one run in his nine innings. And then the next time out at home against San Diego, six innings, one run allowed, and no decision. That's ball one. Dallas 24 years old. Part of what the Astros are doing here developing for the future and. Wandy Rodriguez age 33. Joining a contending club. Well it's been surprising how many trades there have been this far ahead of the deadline this year. Detroit three Cleveland one there in the bottom of the sixth inning with Justin Verlander on the mound for the Tigers. Tigers playing well and they are in a deadlock with the White Sox for the lead in the AL Central right now. Time yeah, called. Well, I, I think. Teams that are sellers. When they get a deal they're happy with they want to pull the trigger for fear that some of the potential buyers may. Have a change of heart. Mm hmm. Um, especially for some of the, you know, the, the front line guys, of, you know, Granky, Hamels, if he were still on the market, you know, the, if you wanted to move those guys, you're going to be able to move them. Mm -hmm. But some of the other guys, you know, maybe not so much. Now it's three and zero oh to Walker. Happy birthday, Bob Ford, the fine public address announcer, here at Minute Maid Park. Washington four Milwaukee nothing they've played three in Milwaukee there's Mr. Bob Ford having a little snack before he announces the next batter Andrew McCutcheon. Birthday cake could be. Walker takes a four pitch walk now two men on one out for McCutcheon. I'm going to. Commanding position down there he could just have the whole. Stadium stand up and sing happy birthday to me. Ooh. And by me, I mean him. And Keichel and Corporon talk it over. McCutcheon single to left in the first, and he grounded out in the third. I don't think the Astros are going to have any chance at all here. They got to continue to put goose eggs on the board. So, very important at bat now for McCutcheon. And Corporon want, wanted to go out and have a chat with Keichel and make sure. They're on the same page as to how they were going to attack this outstanding hitter. I, I love his approach at the plate. He's got such good balance, very quiet. Not a whole lot going on, and he is awfully quick. Kind of coils way he pulls his hands back. Really uses his lower body well. Ball one to McCutcheon. Cutchins only 25. He was a first rounder in 05, the 11th player drafted. Last year he hit 259. He had 23 homers, 89 runs batted in. That's their first strike, one on one. Jeff Bannister from the Houston area is um, the 
bench coach for the Pirates. So you see that whole five draft and he talked about he said yeah. You know a few years ago we were where the Astros are right now. Drafting well with the McCutcheons of the world talking about them quite a bit waiting for them to get here. And, and now it's paying off for the Buccos. Time called. McCutcheon has had two four hit games against the Astros and one three hit game this year. This is the Pirates first at bat of the game with a runner in scoring position. McCutcheon has reached in 22 straight. Ground ball. Chris Johnson getting to second. Altuve up and over. Safe at first. McCutcheon very hard to double. That world class speed and Marte goes to third on the play. And they made it awfully close. Good quick turn here by Altuve up and over with the throw. But McCutcheon able to beat it. Don't forget about the base runner Marte sneaking down that line. Well, Scott Moore was alert. He looked back for the call from Alan Porter and then immediately wheeled to look at Marte, who had taken a big turn around third base. Now, first and third, two outs. Garrett Jones, the batter. Jones ripped a homer in the first, hit a fly ball to right in the third. Marte, yeah, you would think a guy that's first day in the big leagues might be a little nervous. He was about halfway down the line. He sure was. Nick Leva came over and said something to him, the third base coach. It's a one ball, one strike count to Garrett Jones. Had a game winning RBI Sunday against the Cubs. He's driven in eight runs in his last seven games coming into this one, then two more tonight. Well, with a right hander on the mound, I'd imagine that McCutcheon would have already tried to steal second base. Maybe not comfortable trying to get a read off Keuchel so far, he has stayed put. He's going. Here's a throw now to third base, and Marte's in a situation at home plate of being thrown out. Well, the final out here in the fifth inning. Uh, he was trying to be sneaky. <laughs> Ever since he got to third, he was trying to take big liberties, and he wound up getting thrown out. One, three, five, two. Chevy is proud to present a new show called Chevy Hometown Kids. This show is not about the score, it's about the experience. So tune in each Saturday at 10 a.m. right here on Fox Sports Houston or go to hometownkids.tv for more information. Guys, back to you.
Thanks Bart five to nothing the Pirates lead it Astros coming up in the fifth with J.D. Martinez. He gets a curve and it's good for strike one he grounded out earlier. It's been a good all pitch for Burnett that front door curveball. He starts with the right handed hitter and just curls it over the inside part of the plate. Goes foul and it's 0 and 2. Brett Wallace has hit his 15th homer of the year for Oklahoma City tonight. The three players the Astros got in the Wandy Rodriguez deal from Pittsburgh were left handed pitcher Rudy Owens, who's a Triple A Oklahoma City, outfielder Robbie Grossman from Cy Fair High School, and lefty pitcher Colton Kane. Low tap goes foul. Still no balls, two strikes. We got good reports on Robbie Grossman, who walks often. He's speedy, hard nosed player. Kind of guy, you know, the Astros, all clubs do, but Jeff Luno really values those high on base guys. Work deep counts, draw a lot of walks. Little chopper goes out toward the pitcher. Barehanded and Burnett gets it. One out. AJ's only allowed one hit, one base runner, two, four, and a third. There you have it. Rudy Owens is a, a command type of left hander. He's having a very good year. He was an all star in the International League, eight and five with a 3.14 ERA. Robbie Grossman, 262, but that doesn't tell the whole story because he's walking and getting on base. And he was the Pittsburgh Minor League Player of the Year last year. Colton Kane is a harder throwing type left hander. 16 starts, three wins, a 420 ERA in a ball. Chris Johnson, the batter, he struck out looking earlier. That's ball one. So the Astros, since uh, Jeff Luno took over uh, last fall, they have traded eight players who were due to make $40 million for this year, ages 27 through 36, and they've gotten 16 in return. Fouled away. One ball, one strike. And uh, he explained, and there's a very good article on the Fox Sports website by Ken Rosenthal, He's a well known national columnist with a lot of respect. And uh, if you get some time to read that, if you're interested, that explains the whole philosophy behind Jeff Luno's deals. Two balls and a strike. Short version being that. It was difficult to get teams top rated prospects with these deals. So the Astros felt, you know, if we get trade Wandy and get three prospects in return, we're going for numbers, you know, and hopefully there will be the rate of attrition. We know that, but hopefully by getting bigger numbers in return for these players, we have more chances for big league players. Percentage play. Right. Because frankly, the Astros didn't have the chips to demand. Top tier prospects. I mean, right. they got decent prospects. You know, the a couple of those guys from Toronto were pretty well regarded. This Grossman kid, I think, was the fifth or sixth or seventh prospect, top prospect in the Pirate organization, according to some publications. So it's not like they were, you know, picking up bottom of the barrel guys. They no. just didn't get the, you know, they didn't get Jamison Tyon from the Pirates or Garrett Cole, their top two pitching prospects. And that's how you get a fit for a trade. Right. You know, so that, you know, you. you if you got Zach Granke, that's the kind of guy you go after. Sure. That's ball four. CJ works a walk. That's the first for Burnett tonight, his 35th of the year. I was reading one story today about the Padres deal with the Reds last year for Matt Latos. And uh, of course, they got those prospects we saw when we were out there Yasmani Grandal, the catcher, and the the first baseman yonder Alonzo they got a haul for him but he's a 24 year old pitcher who had a good year last year. And the Reds had a need to add a, a, an arm. A quality arm to their rotation a guy who has a chance to be an ace type pitcher so they were willing to give where they had depth they, you know in years down the road I think that San Diego is going to look really good in that deal because those kids can play. Mm -hmm. But. You know, you have to consider the needs of the team at the time. Reds are in go for it mode. They thought Latos was the type of guy that could put them over the top. And they have depth. 
you know, Yonder Alonso's a first baseman. They've got Joey Votto. They've got Mezzarocco behind the plate, so they didn't necessarily need Grandal. Right. Bogusevic with a fly ball. Marte over near the left field line. And then he moves back for it. And Two that's, outs. That's part of the thinking, too, with Jeff Luno acquiring. The, the quantity of prospects gives you depth in the organization, so you're in a position to make similar moves in the future. It's not just about bringing guys to the big leagues, but having that inventory where you can say, "Well, yeah, you know, we're, we're three catchers deep. We can go. We can afford to give up a catcher, even though we feel like he may have more present-day value than what we're getting in return. We need this piece coming our way, and we've got depth to cover that position." And by the way, the catcher we got from Toronto is supposed to be a pretty good player too. Yes. And they are another organization with a lot of depth at the catching position. It's a big part of how these trades occur. Depth that will be tested because Aaron Sebia just broke his hand last night. He's out Ooh, for six weeks. Didn't know that. Carlos Corporan taking ball one. Top prospect. One of them anyway was that uh, Travis Darno. He's a catcher. I don't know if they called him up or not. Well, that's a big injury for Toronto. Reiner Cruz warming up for Houston. Pitcher spot due up next. Matt Downs is in the on deck circle. Toronto beat Oakland today. 10 to 4. Brandon Lyon got the win in relief. Ricky Romero got torched yesterday as the Toronto starter. Wonder if Jay Happ's going to slide into that spot in their rotation. Because he is. Really in a slump right now after a good start this year. Boy, would they take him out of the road? He's their ace. Yeah. Titular anyway. Right. They have a couple other lefties who are, who are doing well but may not be able to sustain that kind of success. Two balls and a strike. And Carnacion hit his 27th for Toronto today. Kelly Johnson, number 11. Josh Reddick hit his 22nd for Oakland. And Brandon Inge, number 11. Lion was a winner in that 10 to 4 game in Toronto. Well back. I've been cooling off that Oakland team a little bit. Mm -hmm. Hayes had won seven in a row, nine out of their last ten. It's all half a game behind the Angels now. Five and a half behind the Rangers. Baltimore six Tampa Bay two. that final from Baltimore Tillman the winner Shields the loser Shields has been in a slump. Chris Davis hit his 16th home run. Strikeout looking that ends the fifth and it's strikeout number four for Burnett no runs no hits a man left after five five nothing Pirates.
Of course, the Astros hosting the Pirates all weekend. Coming up Saturday before the 6.05 game, the first 10,000 fans will receive a Chris Burke Greatest Moments bobblehead courtesy of Day Hill. The bobblehead commemorates Burke's 2005 18th inning walk-off home run that sent the Astros to the NLCS for the second year in a row. Go to Astros.com to get those tickets and get here early to get your Chris Burke Greatest Moments bobblehead. And boy, Chris Burke had a handful of really nice moments for this club. That was by far the biggest, guys. Yeah, well, you know, I've seen this clip. We've been promoting this for a long time now, and Devine keeps throwing him that same pitch. <laughs> Do you think he would make an adjustment? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. well, it's fun, too, when one of the lesser heralded guys, you know, a role player, has such a dramatic swing of the bat. It really is. About uh, Bucky Dent for the Yankees, and mm -hmm. Buddy Bianca Lana in the World Series. Garrett Jones leads it off 5 0 Pirates in the sixth. There's strike one. Saw Wandy jumping around there at home plate. After that big home run by Chris Burke. So Keiko, who's still lead off the bottom of the inning, stays out on the field for the sixth, trailing 5 0. And if he finishes with another zero, he can take something positive out of this game, even though he gave up two homers and three runs in the first and a two run homer in the second inning. Yeah, absolutely. Nice adjustment, especially for a young guy. This is his sixth major league start. There are a lot of guys who get that bomb dropped on you early like that with, with just crater. I mean, he stood tall, hung in there, and done a nice job. The chop goes foul. It's two balls, two strikes to Jones. Michael pitched uh, most of the year at Double A Corpus Christi last year. He had seven starts at Triple A Oklahoma City. Seventh round pick in 09. Out to left center field, JD Martinez. One out. Pirates have only one hit since the second. Now it's McGee coming up. 82 pitches for Keiko. That was one of the things I was watching with Dallas in those first two innings after the home runs. Just watching his his body language and the look in his eye, and you get no sense that he was. You know, uh, overly shook up by it. You know, you've seen young pitchers sometimes getting hit around, and the, you know the gloves on top of the head, and they're spinning around in circles out there, and it's hard to compete when you're you've got that aura about you that you're just collapsing. Mm -hmm. McGee takes ball one. He's fly to center, and he's grounded to third base. The Astros have a great record here at Minute Maid against the Pirates: 68 and 28, a 708 winning percentage. Last time they played the Pirates here was last August, and the Astros swept a three game series. 2 0. Oh. Stylish little dude. Yeah. Two balls and a strike. So you get reunited with your former teammate, with Scotty, coming in tomorrow night. Yeah, that's going to be fun. You guys have any plans? Uh, Maybe go for a drink after the ball game. Yeah. Scott, he doesn't see if we can keep Mike long. awake. I don't know. You know, he's, he's old. You know, they be back traveling a long way. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Vicky, now Vicky would be up for a little conversation. Scotty, we might have to rattle his cage a little bit. Vicky's a good baseball fan. Oh, big time. Bouncer left side, Chris Johnson. Now, I think it's still the plan. I know a while back it was that uh, Kelsey. Was going to sing. Oh. Your daughter Kelsey was going to sing uh, the national anthem or God Bless America or something. I'm not sure. Right. She's the one who went to Baylor, right? Yeah. Scotty from 83 through 91. Cy Young Award winner. They struck out better than the 300 in 1986. Had that no hitter to clinch against the Giants. I think both of Mike's daughters went to Baylor. Okay. Kimmy's the other one, right? Kimmy, Kimmy and Kelsey. Alvarez hits one to center field, backing up Maxwell a few steps. Nice job by Keiko after the second inning. He puts up four zeros. It's five nothing Pittsburgh.
Reverse replay. We take a look at the work of A.J. Burnett tonight. And the early lead, he's given up one hit through five, baby. Yeah, just two base runners. A little flare base hit by Carlos Corporan and a walk all in stands between Burnett and a perfect game through five innings. And now he gets set for a pinch hitter, Jordan Schaefer, batting for Dallas Keuchel here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Schaefer's done well pinch hitting, three for five. 225, three homers, 20 runs batted in, a 308 on base average for Schaefer, who's had 285 at bats this year. He's two for eight lifetime against Burnett with two runs batted in. Schaefer's hitting 170 in July and 53 at bats. Foul back, they strike one. Astros pinch hitters have delivered 34 times in 132 at bats. Keuchel out of the game after six innings of five hit five run baseball. Walking two, fanning two, giving up three homers. No balls, two strikes to Schaefer. Matt Harvey will make his major league debut tonight as a starter for the Mets. Tough place to make your debut. Chase Field in Arizona, great Ooh. hitters ballpark. Top to first. McGee takes it, one out. And he does it for a club that's got a pretty big cloud over them right now. The Mets really scuffling. And he's facing 11 game winning rookie Wade Miley. That game just getting underway now. The Athletics are 15 and 3. Willie Bloomquist has hit 301. Jared Weaver 5 and 0. Oh. Josh Hamilton. 223 in June, 154 in July, and the Mets are 1 and 12 in their last 13. Lost six in a row. I heard uh, Terry Collins' press conference yesterday after mm -hmm. the game. You could just hear that in his voice. Yeah. <laughs> he was trying to keep it together, but he's not a happy guy right now. Not at all. Altuve tried to check his swing, but he went around. Alan Porter with a call, strike one. Altuve has fly to right and he has struck out. Altuve will be the man on social media night. That'll be Saturday night. Prior to the 605 game against the Pirates. Out on the Budweiser patio. He waves at that one. It's 0 2. And you can buy a ticket, which has been discounted from 60 to 45 dollars for that. He really reached for that one. You can meet Altuve, get a T-shirt, a complete meal, ticket on the Budweiser patio, and the chance to watch batting practice. Burnett spins a curveball, gets a strikeout, and that's out number two. Five strikeouts for Burnett. And Jose to expand a couple of times now, going after that breaking ball off the outside edge. Marwin Gonzalez has flied to center and fouled out to the catcher. Just one hit allowed by Burnett that Corporon fly ball hit JD mentioned. Burnett shooting for win number 12 of the year. There's strike one for him. He's only needed 70 pitches to get this far. 48 have been strikes. Cleveland just got two in the bottom of the seventh against Verlander to tie Detroit 3 3. And Ariel Del Rosario warming up for Houston. It's one and one. Travis Hafner hit his 10th home run and Carlos Santana number eight. All Verlander who's still in there. Washington got four in the second, one in the fifth, leading Milwaukee 5 0 in the fifth. Against Gallardo. Well, the Brewers are 44 and 53 now. They are dropping yeah, like a rock. Big toast. Adam LaRoche hit another home run, his 19th. Well, he hits some majestic shots too with that uppercut swing. That's out to right field. Jones back for it. To make it a 1 2 3 6, then Burnett has six innings of one hit shutout ball and a 5 0 lead.
Efficiency Drive sales event. By AT&T, Rethink Possible. And by Carfax. Jay, just say, show me the Carfax. Ask your dealer or go to Carfax.com. On this date in history, back in 1935, there was a 126 double play that was interesting. Ed Link started it. He uh, took a line drive off his head. It bounced back to the catcher who threw the shortstop for the double play. Link did not survive the game. He was in the hospital for two days after being carried off the pitcher's mound on a stretcher. Oh, boy. Wow. Who was that? What was his name? Ed Link. Ed Link. Ed Link. Not Jack Link. He sponsors extra innings. Anario Del Rosario has no decisions. His ERA is 8.56, J.D. E.D. stands for every day, Rosario. He's been a busy man lately. Not quite every day, Eddie Guardardo, but his number has been called a lot here. He continues to try to retool his delivery. He pitched Monday and Wednesday night. Back up top a little bit there. Mm -hmm. All one to Barajas. He walked and scored in the second, struck out in the fourth inning. And Ariel gave up three runs in one inning Monday night, one run in one third of an inning last night. Powering fly ball. Eddie Martinez tracks it. Alan Gonzalez gets out of his way. One out for EDR. Hey, Greg Lucas uh, had an interesting tweet about uh, first major league homers. He did some research and he discovered that the all time leader in home runs. Among those who homered in their first major league at bats are Gary Gaetti with 360 and Carlos Lee is second with 355. How about that? Getting a local yeah. angle there. Yeah. yeah. I knew G Man was the guy. You did? Wow. Yeah. You're all over well, Because we had that uh, came up earlier. Okay. Because uh, again, uh, Sacamano, uh, Charlton Jimerson, David Matrenga. Right. Those are among the, the guys for the Astros that homered in their first at bats. The very first pitch for Starling Marte. Ball one to Barmas. Barmas hit the third pirate home run of the night after Barajas walked. He's one for two. What was this one? It's backhanded. Marvin Gonzalez fires it low and nice play by Scott Moore to get Barmas for out number two. Almost waited too long to fire that thing. Yeah, maybe a little bobble or had to reset the feet. Right there, yeah, they had to go back into the glove to. Get a better grip and a nice pick there by Moore. Two down, and it's A.J. Burnett now. Backing away, ball one. Burnett is struck out and rolled out to the pitcher. Is that Santa's arm? Not sure. Looks like it's Latin or something. Okay. We might have to consult an expert then if it's Latin. You know any old priests? Um, yeah. Yeah, a bunch of them, in fact. Two balls and a strike. That poked through the right side, and Burnett gets a single. His third hit of the year. As we promised earlier in the game, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Life. First pitch of the game, Marte gives himself a big thrill. Lead off homer in his very first pitch as a major leaguer. Pitching awfully early. <laughs> the only other pirate to do that, Walter Mueller, 1922. Their long and illustrious history of Pittsburgh baseball. Fortius Quo Fidelius. Okay, is that is one of his arms? Strength through loyalty. Oh. How did you read that? Well, I googled it. Well, I could read it from his arm when he was hitting, and then I I put the little Google machine here. That's some highbrow stuff for a yeah. tattoo, JD. Well, his wife has it on her stomach. There it is. She has that tattooed on her. Her belly. Well, that would so uh, have been a team thing. Yeah, that would have been a lot more painful than yeah. his. Marte has a homer and a single. It's out to left field. JD Martinez with the catch. No runs, a hit, a man left. Five nothing Pittsburgh in the seventh.
this season. Just subscribe to MLB.tv today to see every Astros out-of-market game live online and on your favorite devices in HD quality. Go to Astros.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv, it's baseball everywhere. Guys, back to you. Thanks, Bart. They are staying active down there. Fans enjoying the seventh inning stretch right here deep in the heart of Texas. It's 5 nothing Pirates. The Pirates uh, have not fared well here recently. But tonight things began <laughs> very quickly for them with a Starling Marte homer on the first pitch of the ball game. Marte was called up when his manager in Indianapolis yesterday. Dean Trainer called him into his office. And uh, he said you hit that double and didn't run hard enough so you're not going to play for Indianapolis tomorrow. And then he paused and said because you're going to play for Pittsburgh. Ah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah that's a, that's probably the best part of that uh, job from Triple A manager sending a kid to the big leagues. Justin Maxwell leads it off in the home seventh inning. He's 0 for 2 a fly ball to right and a pop to first. A one hitter through six for Burnett. He's walked one. Just two base runners. And there's strike one. Burnett got a base hit in the top of the inning. Got a lot of swings and misses at his curveball tonight. He releases it same spot as his fastball. And it, you know, a lot of guys have a kind of a loopy curveball. He does not. So very difficult to recognize that pitch out of his hand. The hitter has to make up his mind early. About a 20 foot window there. The ball leaves the pitcher's hand where a hitter sees the pitch and he has to decide whether to swing or not. Mm -hmm. the chop goes foul. Well, Burnett is the leader in wins on the Pirates staff right now. He's 11 and 3. James McDonald is 10 and 4. Kevin Correa eight and six headed for the bullpen. Jeff Karstens has made only eight starts. He's three and two with an ERA of three point five two. Wandy slots in at seven and nine with a three seventy nine with Houston. One ball two strikes. Eric Bedard is five and eleven, but his ERA is four point three two. So that's the group in rotation right now for the Buckos. How they have fared against the Reds this year. They are five and four against Cincinnati. They'll be playing them in another week or so. Two balls, two strikes. It's been a long wait for the Pirates, but their fans now are showing up in big numbers. They drew 33,000 for a day game yesterday. Should have big crowds for the rest of the year now if they stay in the hunt. Three balls, two strikes for Burnett. Make Clint Hurdle mayor if he gets into the postseason. Yeah. Moore is on deck. In the air to center. McCutcheon. One out. Pirates, even though they really struggled to score runs those first two months of the season, have had the good pitching. So that's what kept them in that situation, not too far out of the race. Now more, more line to second in the fourth inning after he struck out looking in the second. Astros have signed a 16 year old player from Australia, Connor McDonald. Ball one and more. Sure, he's not from Scotland? <laughs> Sounds like it, doesn't it? One ball, one strike. Pirates have won six straight from the Astros. It's two and one. 
Astros have never had an Australian player before, have they? Um, not not homegrown through the system that I know of, JD. Oh, wait, Craig Shipley was here. Shipley wasn't he? was, yeah. yeah. About Ship. Yeah. He's working for the Red Sox now. Is that correct? I do not know. I think he is. Foul back. Two balls, two strikes. Xavier Cedeno is warming up in the Houston bullpen. Burnett beat Miami in his last outing five to one. He gave up one run in seven and two thirds innings. That Marlins picture bears watching for the future. Moore takes ball three. This club here, the Pirates, remember a couple of years ago, they signed a couple of kids from India. That's right. How'd that work out? Not well. So the cricket players, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Uh, they got a lot of pub from it, but it didn't work out well. Was it more more of a publicity stunt? I really think it was. Yeah. Line shot foul. Those guys had not played much baseball at all. Take a a strong armed bowler and teach him the mechanics of pitching, and you never know. I guess. Sure enough. It worked well for John Burkett. He was a strong arm bowler. <laughs> <laughs> he was. He may be the greatest bowling baseball player of all time. Did he ever roll a 300? Yes. Wow. Tons of them. Oh, wow, nice good shot. Swings. Yeah. You know, he lined out last time. So he has had some good swings tonight. Hit number two for the Astros. He's got pretty swing. He does. Nice little uppercut. Keeps it on that plane. That's a good look at it. So he got his weight going into that ball. He's aboard for JD Martinez, who has bounced out twice. Now the Marlins are uh, probably going to blow up the team, it sounds like, which is. Weird after all the money they spent on the free agent market moving into the new ballpark and all the hullabaloo over the winter. Walker tosses hurdle the middleman or a farm is the middleman rather on a four six three double play to end the seventh inning and it's five nothing Pirates. Play involving a base runner breaking McCutcheon off first Keiko with the throw more then has got a runner hung up Marte and throws to Cook Brown who takes him out. That was back in the fifth inning. Now we go to inning number eight. And the Pirates are still leading by the score they had after one and a half five to nothing. It'll be Walker McCutcheon and Jones batting in the eighth inning for Pittsburgh. Walker's 0 for 2 with a walk. Brad Mills said before the game if the Astros needed a closer, it would be interesting and he would try to piece it together. 
Francisco Cordero getting a night off tonight after throwing a pretty good number of pitches in back to back games the last two nights. It's a shot up the middle into center field and Walker's aboard. Hit number seven for the Buccos. McCutcheon will follow. He's one for three. This has been just a sensational year for this man. Glittering numbers. And those numbers don't give you the whole value on him because of his defensive work in center field. But 369. Well, that begs the question. Yes, sir. What's the pirate record for single season batting average? Um Honus Wagner, maybe? That's what we're guessing. Paul Wayner. Those guys are way up there in the high 300s, weren't they? Yeah. Back in the day. Yeah, that'd be really difficult to get there. One ball, one strike. They've been around for a long time, this club. Yes. They, they might have a 400 hitter back way back in the day. That, well, yeah, back before the turn of the century, they probably did. McCutcheon came into this game with a 13 point lead in the batting race. Over Melky Cabrera. Chuch Ruiz third at 345. And Joey Votto fourth. But McCutcheon not only is hitting for average, he's tied for second in homers. He's sixth in runs batted in. He's first in total bases. So on down the line. So this guy is doing it all. He's leading the league in slugging and third in on base average. He's out. So out number one. Yeah. Honest Wagner hit 381 in 1900. Oh, that'd be tough. First strikeout for EDR. Can make a better pitch than that. Yep. But um, what's he at? Three slaves, 369 mm -hmm. prior to that? Yep. That would be the second best all time. Really? Yeah. Now Brad Mills is not going to ask anymore from Del Rosario. He's gotten an inning and third out of him. One out, a runner on here in the eighth inning. Five nothing Pittsburgh back in a moment. Might wind up among the all time Pittsburgh Pirate batting leaders. Archie Vaughn hit 385 in 1935. Yeah, the, the, the page I was looking at in there, a media guide here showed uh, Pirates who had won batting titles. Oh, okay. And uh, I saw Wagner at the top of 381. He was the first batting champion for the Pirates, but there's been an, uh, a handful of guys. Paul Wainer hit 381 year. That year, Vaughn hit 385. Mm hmm. Well, with the production. From McCutcheon in terms of homers and runs batted in, that's a very potent 369. Sedeno in 13 games has no decisions. His ERA is 2.89. Lefty's 6 for 15 against him. And he'll face the lefty hitting Jones, who hit a two run homer in the first inning. He's one for three. Sedeno faced one batter last night, gave up a hit to Jay Bruce. 
And that's ball one. Broken bat. It heads for right center field. Maxwell over. Grabs that one for the second out. Jones needs to get a new bat order. <laughs> yeah. Got some bad wood. He does. Sounds like balsa wood. Yeah, he might have some of that ash that's been infected by those bugs up there in Pennsylvania. Oh, that's right. Brad Mills like that sound. Two outs, and now it's McGee. McGee is 0 for 3. Jordan Lyles goes tomorrow night against Jeff Karstens at 7.05. There's ball one. The Reds will be in Colorado tomorrow night. Hey, this weekend, JD. What's going on? Giants versus Dodgers. Ooh, that'll be good. Oh. oh. Started to break as that pitch got away from Corporal a little bit. Two balls, no strikes. Walker going back to first. Oh, wouldn't the Dodgers love to be able to throw Zach Greinke out there in one of those games against San Francisco? Yeah, I think he's due to pitch Sunday. Giants have a three game lead. And uh, they lost the Panda now, I heard. He went on the DL. Tried to turn himself into a giraffe with that uh, stretch at first base. Yeah, he didn't stay within himself, did he? Uh, no. Panda would not try to stretch like that normally. Mm -hmm. No. Pandas don't stretch. Two balls and a strike. So, you know, it sounds as if the Giants don't really have anything working. And the Dodgers are just anxious to spend all this new money from the ownership group. <laughs> They may have more to come. It sounds as if they have a few irons in the fire. Andy Ramirez is going to play some third and some shortstop until D. Gordon gets back. That's the plan. Foul back. You didn't happen to see the piece on MLB Network that Harold Reynolds did on Andy Ramirez's hitting last night. I uh, did not. Pretty interesting stuff. How he had an open stance when he won the batting title and last year. And this year he had closed his stance. And it was just locking off his hips from anything inside and immediately the Dodgers got him to open his stance again and now he's had a couple of good games for them. Harold to break it down for you. He did. Three balls, two strikes, but you know, I find it hard to believe <laughs> and they hadn't yeah. been made aware of that somewhere yeah. along the line by the Marlins. There's a lot of different ways to get it done. There's plenty of guys that hit with closed stances and do fine. Other guys have to hit out of an open stance. Three and two, two outs. The runner Walker will take off. Pedro Alvarez on deck. Swing and a miss. Daniel gets a strikeout. Picks up two outs in the inning, no runs, one hit, one man left, 5 0 Pittsburgh.
On 705 start tomorrow night, 630 for Astros Live on FS Houston. Jeff Karstens, 3 and 2 with a 3.52 ERA versus Jordan Lyles, 2 and 7 with a 5.50. That's tomorrow night, game two of this four game series. Alex Presley has entered the game in right field, taking over for Garrett Jones. Jones homered in the first inning, and he went one for four. The Astros come up in the home eighth inning. Chris Johnson, the batter. CJ struck out looking in the second. He drew a walk in the fifth. That's been the only walk for Burnett. He got a double play ball last inning. He's allowed only two singles. And that's ball one for Burnett. Astros have had one base runner as far as second base. Corporan in the third inning after a bunt by Keichel. Well, nobody will be able to moan about wasted opportunities. No. It's a shot to left field, headed for the boxes, and a home run. Chris Johnson, number seven. Andres Crawford boxes, and that gives him 39 runs batted in. It's been a while since CJ had gone deep. I believe it was the Cleveland series. Yeah, June 24th. 82 at bats coming into play tonight. Well, a nice swing in the bat here. All of his home runs have come here at Minute Maid Park. This is a fastball that just runs in on him, but he didn't let it get all the way in. Pulled the hands in, got the barrel out. There's a man in scoring position. Yeah. Instant run. Brian Bogusevic's 0 for 2. Taking ball one. He's grounded out and hit a fly ball to left. Have you visited Everybody Reads Raymond, the official blog of Dave Raymond? Uh, I have looked, I've read Dave's blog. It's outstanding. Yeah. I, I, I don't know that I've seen his most recent entry. Most recent entry uh, from four days ago, Chopping Broccoli. Pretty interesting stuff about all the Astros trades. Oh, I have seen that. Okay. He's got a clever turn of phrase. He does. Two balls and a strike. Link that through Astros.com. Carlos Corporan's on deck. It's now three and one to Bogusevic after the home run by Johnson, and we see the bullpen and Reiner Cruz. Strike there makes it a full count to Bogey. And it's probably thrown less than 10 pitches from the stretch tonight. Yeah. Brad Lincoln, the U of H Cougar, in the bullpen. Bouncer first. Flagged down by McGee. Tossing to Burnett. Played that one off his left hip. One out. Brad just missed Cougar night by one night. Man. Not often you get Cougar night at the ballpark. No. Bogey hits the ball on the ground uh, a lot. Among the uh, leaders, if you want to phrase it that way, in the league. Okay. Ground ball versus fly ball ratio. A big, strong guy. You'd like to see him hit the ball in the air a little bit more, take advantage of his strength. Just the nature of his swing. Well, Brown takes ball one. He singled in the third, struck out looking in the fifth. With the everyday players, Jeter is the guy who hits on the ground more than anybody. But he's not a power guy. No, but he's done pretty well with that style. One ball, one strike. Cleveland took the lead on Detroit. With a four run seventh against Justin Verlander and still leads five to three. Tigers batting top of the ninth in Cleveland. Gentleman Young hit his 11th for Detroit earlier. So the White Sox might get a lift from the tribe. 
two balls and a strike, but the tribe's still in it too. Yeah, they're right at 500. That's a foul ball. Alan Porter with a call that makes it two and two. Corporal just staring at him. McGee went lunging for it. Porter on the call there at first. Corporal just stopped and stared at Porter. Come on, give a guy a break. Yeah. Well, it had hit fair, so if it had gone over the bag. Over any part of the base, even though it landed foul after that, it would have been a fair ball. That down's on deck. And that one goes foul. Still two and two. Kansas City and Seattle just underway. No score after one half inning. Mendoza going for the Royals. Seems like there'd be some technology they could use that would read that ball over the base. It does. It does seem that way, yeah. yeah. A little green light would flash for fair. I think you're on to something, JD. Some sort of a laser. Yeah. Like that, uh, what is it, the shot spot in uh, tennis? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Three and two. Kansas City is hitting 301 since the All Star break to lead the majors. Mariners team ERA since the All Star break is 3.14, so that's the matchup tonight Kansas City at Seattle. That's hit high to right field. Presley back. Corporan has ripped another long ball for Houston, the second of the inning. 5 to 2 on his second of the season. That would be a high fiving Allen Porter around the bases now <laughs> for keeping that at bat alive. Thanks, Allen. Instead of two, he gets four bases, his second major league home run. At number one in Arizona on the road trip. He's swinging the bat pretty darn well. 600 slugging percentage is pretty well. And that'll do it for Burnett. Who gives up homers to Johnson and Corporat. Sandwiching around the bogus heavy ground out. That makes it five to two. A couple of solo shots will hasten the exit of Burnett. Hurdle out to take the baseball from him with one out in the eighth inning. Pittsburgh leading five to two. They go to the bullpen and we step out for this. Unloading. And now the pinch hitter Matt Downs comes up for the pitcher Sedano. Meanwhile, there's a new pitcher on the mound. Brad Lincoln. Downs at 200 with seven homers. Has 13 runs batted in. 
As a pinch hitter, Matt is two for 25 with an RBI. Lincoln, 27 years old, from Lake Jackson, Texas, and the University of Houston. A first round pick in 06, the fourth player drafted. He's taken well to relief this year, JD. Yeah, check out those numbers in relief 2 0 with an 053 ERA. Part of a very good Pirate bullpen. One of the best in baseball. He's a fastball curveball pitcher primarily. Every now and then he'll throw a split finger pitch. Lincoln was a starter last year, 19 times for Pittsburgh. And had had 23 major league appearances prior to this season with 17 starts. Pitched once against the Astros July 4th in Pittsburgh, and it was a scoreless inning. Downs puts it in the air, and McGee comes over near the stands for this. It's out of play. Two and two. His pirate bullpen has surrendered just one run in the last eight games, covering 21 and two thirds innings. As JD mentioned, ranking very high, second in the majors in bullpen ERA, 2.54. Just a tick behind the Reds bullpen. It looks like it's the battle of the bullpens between these top two in the NL Central. Downs fouls back to breaking ball to stay alive at two and two. Matt in his last nine games has gone eight for 21 with a 381 average, two homers, four runs batted in. He was 0 for 3 in the Cincinnati series. That ball runs in on him, and it's a full count to Matt Downs. Two of those three at bats were off Chapman. Ooh, That's yeah. a tough assignment. Come <laughs> off the bench and deal with that. <laughs> That's tough. 103 miles an hour. Thanks for the confidence in me, Skip. But next time I'll pass. Mm. Ball four. Downs continues this Houston eighth inning with one out by reaching for Altuve. Told you we set him up earlier. You're right. The ambush is on. Just the, they've waited a little long for the ambush. I thought it might come a little earlier. <laughs> Altuve is 0 for 3. They got a puncher's chance here. The problem is, again, this pirate has, the Pirates have a very good bullpen. Jason Grilly having a real nice year out there. Hughes, Ben Dynamite, and of course, Hanrahan, the closer. He's awfully tough. Pirates only have one lefty in their bullpen. But that might be something they want to address at the trade deadline. But I guess that's the, that's the kind of thing you could you could get after the deadline passes. Good point. I think guys with clear waivers. Mm -hmm. There's a look over to first base. The Mets gave the rookie Matt Harvey making his major league debut two runs in the first at Arizona and lead two nothing after two now against Wade Miley. I like Miley a lot. Oh, yeah. I was really impressed when we got our first look at him the other day in the desert. Good composure, JD. Kept the ball down well. Harvey was seven and five at AAA Buffalo with a 3.6 ADRA. Had 112 strikeouts in 110 innings. 23 years old. Highly regarded. A little line drive over the second baseman's head. Go first and third here. Make Clint Hurdle nervous. Lincoln steams the throw over. Yeah, he'd be getting a little concerned if that happened. Marlon Gonzalez on deck. It would be interesting to do a monitoring of, of managers over the course of the baseball season. From April and then teams that are in the pennant race in August and September, you know, put Blood pressure monitoring devices on them. You bet it would. Heart rate, you know, just kind of, <laughs> kind of stay on top of it. You mean the way they do basketball coaches? Do they do that to basketball? They coaches? do, and it's ridiculous how high their heart rate gets during a game. It is oh. absurd. Hey, when I was coaching at the Y, man, I'm telling you what, those Saturday morning games, <laughs> I was a mess. <laughs> Ray Searage comes out. Lincoln falls behind 2 0 on Altuve. 
Jose's hit 422 against the Pirates this season. Lincoln got a save not too long ago. Joel Hanrahan is the normal closer for the Hurdles Club. The Pirates have 36 saves and 42 opportunities. They have really done well. In fact, when they lead after seven innings, they have not lost. 48 0. It's kind of fun to, to contemplate the dynamics of the dugout scene in, in a tight game late because at one end of the dugout, the manager and his bench coach, and they're all Caught up in everything, very tense. Then at the other end, you know, typically you got the starting pitchers that aren't pitching that night. They might not even know what the score is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These guys are invested. Well, Karsten's there. Yeah, he's semi invested. He's pitching tomorrow. Really, the right hander, Watson, the lefty. Can't believe that last one was a strike. Look at that thing, JD. Come on, it should be 3 0. It's a brain cramp for Daryl. Wow. Really bad, but now two balls, two strikes on L2. Watson and Grilly. It's interesting because if anything, you made the case that he's been fairly tight tonight, but that's on the ball down. Maybe you know, he sees it up. He just blew it, so you've got to live with it. How many, what percentage of an Altuve do you think that missed by? <laughs> At least a, 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 a 30 second of an <laughs> Altuve high there. Yeah. And now to center field. McCutcheon backing. For out number two. He got a pitch he could handle, just didn't do much with it. Yes, he did. Now two down, and it's Gonzalez coming up. This time Lincoln challenges him with a fastball over the heart of the plate. Just a little bit behind it. Marwin is 0 for 3. Altuve's five game hitting streak coming into this one, leading into an 0 for 4 night. Tough night for him, 0 for 4 with a couple of punch outs. Yeah, he doesn't get many of those. Maxwell's on deck. Gonzalez trying to reach to bring Maxwell up as the potential tying run. Dirt for ball one. Seattle with Jason Vargas on the mound got two in the bottom of the first to lead Kansas City two nothing after one. Mariners turning the page after the Ichiro trade. Washington eight the wonky nothing bottom of the seventh. Edwin Jackson going for the Nationals. Brewers have hit eight homers off Edwin Jackson in his career. He is getting a little payback tonight. One ball, one strike. Harper's in right field tonight for Washington. Morse in left. Bernardina in center. Lombardozzi has moved to second base. And the new shortstop is Espinoza, who moved over from second. Reiner Cruz warming up for Houston. So that Desmond injury might be pretty well covered by the Nationals. One and two. A lot of people were concerned that when Ian Desmond went out, that, that club would falter, but they have some versatility on the team. Espinosa can handle shortstop. Yes. And now Lombardozzi at second base and handles the bat pretty well. Bernadina's hit fine. He's 291. The roller goes to McGee and the toss to Lincoln. To end the eighth inning, Houston getting two on home runs by Johnson and Corporan. Five to two Pittsburgh.
Progressive Insurance Group. Call 1-800-PROGRESSIVE today. Nighttime falls over Houston. The Astros uh, have to stop the Pirates from adding on anymore and hope that the offense can pick up one more time as Reiner Cruz is on for the Astros. The fourth Houston pitcher, Bill Brown and Jim Deshays are in the booth. Thanks, Craig. Reiner with a 1-0 record in 31 games has an ERA of 7.16. Well, Astros uh, bullpen has pitched scoreless baseball so far tonight. They have not done that very much in the last couple of weeks. First EDR, then Cedeno doing a nice job in support of Dallas Keuchel. And now the Rule 5 pick, Reiner Cruz back out there. Got Alvarez, Barajas, and Barma 6, 7, and 8 due up here for the Pirates in the top of the ninth. And they're going to have to contend with a 95 mile an hour heater, a hard slider. And a 95 mile an hour heater, sometimes he's not sure exactly where it's going. Mm -hmm. Strike one on the foul ball. Alvarez 0 for 3 tonight. Cedeno retired both batters he faced, one on a strikeout. Del Rosario, one in the third innings, two hits, no runs with a strikeout. Gonzalez positioned up the middle. Cruz missing there for a one ball, one strike count. The Astros in the bottom of the ninth have their three, four, five hitters, Maxwell Moore and Martinez. Placido Polanco going to the disabled list with a back injury for the Phillies. 97 miles an hour. One and two. Alvarez a good fastball hitter, but he was tardy on that one. Very dangerous hitter. Not hitting for average, but he's got a lot of power. Some numbers on Alvarez earlier. It was nine hits since the All-Star break. Five of them home runs. Mm. He's close to being sent back down again this year. Yeah. Like he was last year. Yeah, he struggled early. At one point, he went one for 19 with 12 strikeouts. Didn't do much in spring training either, but it's come around. Two balls, two strikes. Alvarez, quite a star at Vanderbilt. He was the second player drafted in the 08 draft. At 235 at bats last year with the Buccos, hitting 191 with four homers, 19 runs batted in. Out the way, still two and two. Yeah, I imagine that's one of the toughest things about scouting amateur players. I mean, even at the, at the top college levels, the hitters aren't exposed to you know consistent frontline pitching. So you know, a guy can really put up some big numbers. Against mediocre guys and you know, hang in there against the best guys, and you think, wow, this guy's legit. And then he gets into professional baseball, and it's a little bit tougher. Sure does. It's in the center field. Lead off single for Alvarez. A lot of times they're looking for the tools, they're just looking for raw power. Scouts will go and watch batting practice. The guy routinely bangs the ball over the wall, gets their attention. And if in the game he's able to turn around a 93 mile an hour fastball, that helps confirm what they saw in BP. Now you start to think about, okay, well, what kind of discipline does he have at the plate then? Mm -hmm. Is he a patient hitter? And I think that's where the game has changed. I think before there was, you know, players were drafted on their tools. I remember playing a lot of guys in the lower minor leagues that were high draft picks, just really good athletes. They could throw, they could run. And the thinking was we can teach him to hit. Well, a lot of those guys never learned how to hit. Barajas is 0 for 2 with a walk. Big cut there, strike one. Remember the old Kansas City Royals Baseball Academy? Make a living with that one. Yes, I do. Frank White came out of that academy. He sure did. And they took Raw players and really worked very hard with them. Am I going to school? Concentrated study to try to give them that focus on one sport, baseball. A lot of those players had been athletes who had 
maybe starred in other sports as well as baseball, but hadn't concentrated on baseball. It's kind of like uh, the Correa kid that the Astros drafted first from Puerto Rico. He was in a, in a baseball academy down there. That's right. It's out to center field, Maxwell. That's one down. Yeah, I heard from Kelsey Scott's agent. She is oh. singing tomorrow night. Good. She's singing God Bless America. That's fantastic. The agent getting 15%? I think so. <laughs> Clint Barmas hit a home run in the second inning to the Crawford boxes. He's one for three. Drew Sutton is on deck. Pitcher spot due up next. Contest between Scotty and Kelsey. See who performs better on the field. <laughs> Mike's first pitch versus Kelsey singing. That's right. I've got my money on Kelsey. <laughs> well, maybe we should switch and have Kelsey throw out the first pitch and have Mike <laughs> sing. That would be fun. <laughs> I don't think Mike sings, does he? No balls, two strikes. <laughs> Everybody sings a little bit sometimes. A little bit in the shower. Do you ever yeah. hear him singing in the shower or anything like that? No. no. Okay. Five, eight, and oh for the Buckos. Two, four, and oh for the Astros. Each club with three men left on base. That one took off. It's one and two. Washington eight Milwaukee nothing bottom of the seventh. Edwin Jackson you know he's a pretty solid guy if he's your four or whatever he is over there. True. He's got a three and a half ERA. Well, that's a deep pitching staff. Whoop. Wow Corporon tremendous range. Tell you what his uh, his left arm's almost been pulled out of its socket on the last two pitches. A little change of direction here from Reiner. Hanging on just a little too long. Whoa. Might as well just spin all the way around. Corp, a little 360. He needs an extension arm. <laughs> How comfortable is Barmas oh, right now? Oh, he doesn't want any part of this, I don't think. Three and two. Last one was two feet outside, and now that runner, that's the one. You see him hit a number of hitters with. You know, it's a lot of lateral movement on that pitch. Tough for a right handed hitter who's looking to cover the outside corner to get out of the way of that one. It's going to be really interesting to follow Reiner Cruz to see if he's able to turn the corner command wise. Mm -hmm. Runner going. Foul ball. Given the nature of the Astro season, he should get plenty of opportunities the rest of the way. As he tries to find himself and, and, and get better command of his pitches. Yeah. Now being a Rule Five draft choice, though, that's giving him that opportunity to work it out at the major league level. But then the rules change after that first year in the big leagues. They're going again. Fly ball left toward the corner. J.D. Martinez trying to get there in time, and he reaches out on the run and snags it. Firing back toward second base. Good running catch. Two outs. It'll be Drew Sutton pinch hitting for Lincoln now. J.D. ultimately able to run underneath that one. Yeah, uh, Reiner Cruz. Uh, if he doesn't show marked improvement in his command between now and the end of the year, whether he goes to winter ball or not, I suspect he will do a little pitching in the winter ball and then spring training. He could very well find himself in the minor leagues next year. But again, still worth keeping an eye on him. Sure. You don't find you know shake a tree and get an arm like this. Nope. Drew Sutton, game-winning hit against the Astros in Pittsburgh. This line drive caught by Bogusevic as he pinch hits. For Lincoln, it's no runs a hit and a man left. We go to the bottom of the ninth. It's five to two, Bucko.
Rockies in a showdown between bitter division rivals. Fox Saturday Baseball telecast presented by Budweiser begins at 2.30 p.m. Central, only on Fox. Of course, the Red Sox at the bottom of that division, but that doesn't matter when those two teams play, Brownie. Throw out the record books. That's Mark. it. It's rivalry weekend. Yes, it Say is. Say that fast three times. <laughs> Barbara Wawa. It's rivalry weekend. <laughs> yes, it is. Thank you, Gilda Radner. And Joel Hanrahan, who once got a win against the Astros while taking a nap, comes in with a 4 0 record and 29 saves in 32 opportunities this year. He does throw us the baseball very hard. What happened was Hanrahan had pitched for Washington in a game that was suspended in 09. And before it was resumed, he had been traded to the Pirates. When it was resumed, the Nationals won, and so he was given the win while he was taking a nap on the road somewhere. Wow. Well, what if he woke up with a start? Yes. <laughs> he probably did. Well, now he's going to have to work a little bit harder for it. It'll be Maxwell Moore and Martinez, although he does have the easiest type save situation. Three run lead, one inning to go. Astros had to deal with the Raldis Chapman a couple of times in that series with the Reds. Anderhan doesn't throw that hard, but he's, he can bring it 97 miles an hour. Wanted, and this one might work. Barehanded, Alvarez all over it. That's a good play. Oh, it sure is. Nice try by Maxwell. He put down a sweetheart of a bunt. Good read there. That was a great shot because you saw the break. You saw the minute that Maxwell started to slide that hand up, Alvarez was off and running. Not allowed him to get there and barehand it. Make the quick throw. Nice play. Guy who's known more for his bat and a heck of a defensive play there. Mm -hmm. Ball one to Moore, who singled to right field in the seventh inning. He lined out to second in the fourth. And the game in 09 was 11 to 10 in 11 innings when Hanrahan was declared the winner for Washington. It's two balls, no strikes. The Pirates lead the majors in saves with 36. And their save percentage, 85.7, also is first in the majors, 36 of 42. I'm throw that heater about 75% of the time, and then he'll mix in sliders. That's about it. He plays the power game hard slider. Not trying to trick anybody. Well, there's a four pitch walk to Moore. Hanrahan has given up a couple of runs. Got a blown save against the Astros in Pittsburgh July 3rd. In his four innings allowing those two runs. J.D. Martinez hit a homer off him in Pittsburgh although he did get a save July 4th. J.D. 0 for 3 tonight. Walk was the third for Pirate pitching. Lincoln in two thirds of an inning, allowing no hits, no runs, with a walk and no strikeouts. Burnett in line for his 12th win. And another ball. Martinez goes to a 1 0 count. Hanrahan, 30 years old, from Des Moines, Iowa. Drafted in the second round by the Dodgers in 2000. Pitched 70 times for the Bucks last year was 40 of 44 in saves. One and one. And Rahan started a game against the Astros in Houston in 07 against Wandy Rodriguez. Really, I don't remember him starting. Well, let's see how many. A long time ago. He's remember. only started 11 times. Yeah. One and two. How could I be expected to remember that? You couldn't. He gave up a leadoff homer to Craig Biggio and wound up the winner 11 to six, giving up three runs in five innings. In the oh. dirt. Ouch. Here goes the runner and. He makes it easily. Scott Moore took off when he saw that ball in the dirt and advanced on the wild pitch by Henry. Well, that run not all that important down three, but worth taking the base. If you can make it, takes the double play away from the Pirates. Might help preserve the inning. About a 55 footer. 
Well, the last time Hanrahan faced the Astros, he got a double play ball to save a two nothing win in Pittsburgh. <laughs> oh yeah. Stealing from the uh, the Angels, <laughs> the rally monkey. Yeah. Or whatever that creature is. Chris Johnson's on deck. Astros would love to get him to the plate with two men on or one run in and one man on to represent the potential tying run in this game. Hanrahan got 26 straight saves to open the season last year before a blown save. A swing and a strikeout. Two outs. Boy, JD's mad at himself for going for that one. Looking for a heater there, and Hanrahan came with a good hard slider. Uh -huh. All kinds of wildlife in the ballpark. <laughs> two outs, and it's Chris Johnson who homered last time up after walking in the fifth. He's one for two. Foul back, and that's strike one. The Pirates. Perhaps an out away from being within two games of first. Cincinnati idle tonight. Two games difference in the loss column. And Rahan's been a workhorse. He pitched 67 times in 09, 72 in 2010, and last year's 70 appearances. Balls, two strikes. Mike Marshall once pitched 200 innings in relief in this season. Yeah. I think he won 15 in relief. Better than 100 appearances. And throwing a screwball, too. In the dirt. Rojas is taking a beating. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> One ball, two but, strikes. You know, I, I talk all the time about that two strike breaking ball. You don't want to leave it in the zone. And you got a guy in Chris Johnson who has shown a willingness to chase. I'm not even sure what that was. It didn't look like a slider. I think he just spiked his fastball. And we're an all star for the second straight year. Another one in the dirt. Uh -huh. Again, blocking it. Two and two. And Rahan came here from the Nationals for Niger Morgan and Sean Burnett. Lastings Millage also coming to the Pirates in that deal. Whatever happened to him? Well, he did a quick yeah. fade, didn't he? It's never really panned out. I think he was a first round pick at the Mets. Ball three, Chris Johnson hanging in, working the count full. And Bogusevic would be next. He provided the highlight of the year last year with that walk off grand slam against the Cubs. Hammerhand got his 29th save yesterday with a 1 2 3 ninth. He's second in the majors. Now back. Since his third blown save, which came against the Astros in Pittsburgh, July 3rd, he's had a save in nine straight appearances. He's fourth on the Pirate all time save list. Dave Justy, third. Liner on by Barmas into left center field. And that'll score more. RBI single 5 3 as Chris Johnson drives in his second of the night and 40th of the year. CJ struck out looking his first trip to the plate since then. Walk, home run, and RBI single. A solid night for Chris Johnson, and the Astros still have life. Last ball, belly button high. For a minute there, that Barmus was going to be able to make that play. It looked like he would. Yeah. Bogusevic is one for four. A 
against Hanrahan. A well hit by CJ. Two hit night for him. Bogusevic has grounded out twice to first base and fly to left field. Justin Verlander lost for Detroit 5 3 at Cleveland. All right, Bogey. Four runs on deck. And they'll strike one. Last RBI July 4th at Pittsburgh. CJ gets to second. One ball, one strike. Hanrahan trying to keep the wheels from falling off here. Barajas trying to give him a little encouragement saying, We're good. You're fine. Yeah, it's like it's like he's just needs to reset his sights here. Mm -hmm. Man, look at that. Can't that bounced up. into the strike zone. It sure Not did. Like cricket earlier. That was a pretty good cricket it was. pitch or whatever. A bowl, whatever they call it. Yeah. Second wild pitch of the inning for Hanrahan. It's been a wild inning so far for him. One and two. Hanrahan got a blown save. And Pittsburgh when uh, Jason Castro picked up an RBI double on him in the ninth inning, but then he wound up with a win. And the Pirates took it eight to seven. It could be easy to face a guy who's throwing the way Hammerhand is tonight. Can't really zero in on him. You know? Exactly. What's he trying to do by throwing me that 45 footer? <laughs> and then he rides it up. And it's a strikeout to end the game. And Hanrahan gets saved number 30. A.J. Burnett, a 12 game winner. The Pirates win it 5 to 3. They've now captured seven of their last nine. And they're two behind front running Cincinnati. Marte starting it with a homer on the game's first pitch. Pirates 5, Astros 3 tonight.